Okay, so hello guys. Before we start, I would like to thank all of you, especially those who were very supportive and liked this idea of me posting videos about linguistics. Okay, so previously we discussed applied linguistics and I tried to give you an overview of what you are going to study in this module. But today, in today's video, we are going to tackle a very different issue which is general linguistics okay so general linguistics is not really like applied linguistics it is kind of theoretical so it deals with uh, let's say theories of linguistics in general starting from traditional grammar to transformational generative grammar with Chomsky so anyway in the introduction you would notice that most of the teachers focus on language so basically you will be given so many definitions about language of language so every teacher has his own philosophical let's say ideas about language what is language anyway so I will provide you with this language with this definition it's not really a definition it's just an idea of, a de of what is language so basically language is primarily speech okay it is primarily speech so we have the three components of any language are syntax syntax is the core of any language phonology which is the sound system of any language and semantics the meanings of this language okay I just want to draw your attention to this idea of animals animals do not have a language animals have means of communication but not a language okay this has to be clear in your minds animals do not have language anyway as I said before you will be provided with so many definitions about language there are some of which which are concerned with the basic premise of communication language is used only for communication there are others who are who have very different views Anyway, it's not really that important to define language for me. Okay, so in the second session, you will deal with how to differentiate between human language and any other means of communication. And here we will be relying on Charles Hockett's 16 features of language. Okay, if you want to look for it in the internet, just type Charles Hockett's 16 features of language 1963 and you will be given all of his features anyway I try to focus on the last three features of language which are universal I repeat which are very universal these features are universal okay make no mistake so I will give you just the last three features and I let you find out about the rest so the first one is prevarication Prevarication is one of the features of human language because animals do not prevaricate. To prevaricate is to mislead others, to lie. We humans are the only ones who mislead others. We lie, we make false sentences, we do all of these stuff with language. Okay? The second one is reflexiveness or meta language. What is meta language? Meta language is that is to use language to talk about language. That's what it's called. What, what it is called reflexiveness. It is to use language to discuss language, and that's one of the features we humans do. For example, even now we are using English to explain English. That's meta language. And the last one is learnability. Learnability is basically this ability to learn any other language we can learn Spanish German Chinese Japanese Turkish any other language we have this ability we have this innate ability okay it is kind of let's say universal grammar we use our abilities to learn any other language but mind you animals do not have this ability to learn any other language that's why we cannot call their means of communication a language okay so animals can probably cats mew dogs bark 
you can never find the dog that mews and the cat that barks they don't learn each other's languages basically anyway so these are the features that differentiate between human language and any other means of communication remember this and they are universal universal in the sense that they exist in all human languages in Arabic French all of them we prevaricate we use language to talk about language we learn all other types of languages okay so now we move to the theoretical aspect of general linguistics which is the history of linguistics so this course is gonna be kind of loaded okay it's very long but just focus with me I'm gonna give you the headlines some basic ideas about each school so what what you guys are will, will be what you guys will be doing is this you are going to study the different schools of linguistics from the Greeks to transformational generative grammar with Chomsky okay I'm not gonna focus on functional linguistics because you guys are not gonna talk about it anyway it is based on communication okay we have Himes in the, is the leading figure communicative competence anyway you're not gonna focus on this much so let's start history of linguistic theory okay you guys will be dealing with the Greeks their ideas about language in general and you are going to talk about them in the Middle Ages Arabic linguistics you will be very surprised by the Arabic linguistics in at all times and we have from Renaissance till 19th century we have historical linguistics historical linguistics let's say it studies language language change that's historical linguistics it is very different from the history of linguistic theory okay mind you they are not the same history of lingu linguistic theory will be studying all the different schools of linguistics but in historical linguistics you will study how languages change how can we prevent this change okay we have structural linguistics mm -hmm. with Ferdinand de Saussure synchronic as opposed to diachronic Mm -hmm. We have transformational generative grammar with Chomsky is the last school we will be studying. So basically, let's talk about the Greeks. The Greeks, they just wanted to know the nature of the world around them, so they studied everything, including language. It was not, let's say, linguistics. They were just studying language. Okay? So, the first grammarians were philosophers. The most famous, famous ones were... Plato, Aristotle, the Stoics, and so on and so forth. So basically, the Greeks debated whether language was governed by nature or by convention. Okay. They had this, let's say, anomalistic point of view and the analogistic point of view. Okay, that is analogy versus anomaly. Okay, that's what that was their debate. Analogists such as Aristotle held that language was basically irregular everything works by analogy so analogy means regularity whereas the stoics who were anomalists they said that language was irregular therefore it admits anomalies or irregularities okay for example we have irregular verbs go becomes in the past went and in the past participle gone okay that was their debate and also they argued whether language was governed by nature or convention that's very easy it's not something you will you will find difficult okay so the second ones were in the middle ages okay the middle ages grammarians were interested in language as a tool for analyzing the structure of reality okay Okay, so during this time we could say that Latin, Latin was the norm, it was the norm, it was the most or say the, the language that dominated the Middle Ages. Other languages such as English, French, Spanish, they were looked down upon. They were considered as vernaculars. Mm -hmm. So you will hear the, uh, discuss this idea of speculative grammar okay let's say the Arabic linguistics Arabic linguistics studies let's say the study of Arabic linguistics was kind of concerned with the study of the Quran okay 
because the Quran was not to be translated at that time so anybody who wants to become a Muslim had to learn Arabic okay hence the importance of teaching Arabic was kind of reduced okay you will find that Arabic linguistic contributed contributed to this linguistic theories very let's say in a kind of a strong manner okay with Latin language was kind of let's say analyzed just from the syntactic point of view but with Arabic let's say that they provided other fields of linguistics like phonology dialectal variations lexicology all of these new fields like they were given by let's say linguists like uh, who was his name what was his name Al Khalil Al Farra Sibawi okay all of them contributed to Arabic linguistics okay they produced these fields lexicology phonology and they worked best at the phonetic and phonological point of view okay they were the ones to start with voiceless and voice consonants and you know and now we have the Renaissance okay in the Renaissance we are going to talk about the Port Royal Grammarians okay so they were they have kind of ideas similar to those of the Middle Ages okay they were interested in how language interprets things by the mind like speculative grammar very similar ideas okay they have they had this interesting quote la langue est le miroir de l'esprit humain okay that is language is the mirror of our mind okay they were interested in language and the mind mm -hmm. um, there we have historical linguistics historical linguistics studies language change how languages change over time is the concern of historical linguistics Mm -hmm. we will see that these changes are not random because if we examine the history of various languages we will find very we will find some patterns of this change like for example if we compare old english and modern english you will find that so many changes happened in the last let's say 1000 years okay there were let's say phonetic changes phonemic morphological syntactic for example I give an example in this syntactic change old English allowed questions to be formed only by inverting the subject and the verb but today the do support is necessary the do support is to use the auxiliary do in forming questions nowadays in English we have to use the auxiliary do or any other auxiliaries okay we know that there are three auxiliaries to be to have and to do all of them are auxiliaries you will study why do languages change basically because of mobility of speakers who travel and also because of contact okay borrowings other lang other all languages borrow from each other due to this mobility of speakers for example if I travel to China or let's say if I travel to Algeria I will absolutely bring with me some let's say cargo of new words and I'm gonna try to employ them in Moroccan Arabic and hence Moroccan Arabic will kind of be similar to Algerian language okay this mobility of speakers also helps in this language change you will see how how do communities react to language change okay so they just don't like this guy this idea of language change they form let's say language academies whose aim is to prevent this language change mm -hmm. um, then we will move to historical linguistics which is an aspect of diachronic uh, now we talked about this we will uh, talk about structural linguistic with linguistics with Ferdinand de Saussure and transformational generative grammar Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys will learn anything from this video. I just try to give you an overview 
but later on I'm gonna devote devote a lot of time to post other videos concerning the Greeks alone I'm gonna give a whole lecture on the Greeks the Middle Ages Arabic linguistics so this was just an introduction okay you know I cannot give all the information I have right now so thank you for watching and see you later on stick around for more videos and more explanations and please if you have any question do not hesitate just comment it or send it to me by mail or anything so thank you for watching and see you later on